Hello and welcome to the video. This is part of the endurance build and I've been building a couple of very large quadcopters over the past couple of months. The first one is a seven inch version which worked beautifully with Betaflight in the middle and was using the extended arms on a flynoceros frame and the last time we did a 10 inch quad and this video is actually placed in both of those playlists because I'm about to speak to a gentleman called Martin Rye. Now Martin is somebody who has a business, and we'll talk to Martin in a second, that is all about X-Class racing frames. Now, I know I'm just a little insert in the top of the image here. That is the, just the central piece. That actually isn't the arm. That's just where the arm connects to. The arm is this. I'm going to insert some videos um, and some pictures of and what the X-Class frame is when it's built up. But thank you to everybody who got in touch and said, if you're looking for a big frame to run... 10, 11, 12 inch or even 14 inch props on, then the X-Class frames are a fantastic idea. Speak to Martin at Fossil. So thank you to everybody that gave me that fantastic suggestion. Martin and I have known each other for a couple of years and Martin has very generously given up his time this morning to have a chat with me because not only does he build and design these X-Class racing frames, he also has a team that runs them as well and excitingly, inside they're running beta flight, standard flight controllers, standard BL Heli ESCs. And a quick chat with him last week, he talked about all the things that they've learned getting stuff that's really designed, let's face it, for five, six, maybe seven inch quadcopters onto these great big whacking X class frames and getting them to work beautifully. And all of that know how is exactly what we as endurance quadcopter builders need to know about. So I'm actually going to try and build out this endurance quadcopter using an X class frame. But before I do that, I want to pick Martin's brains about what he's done to get <clears throat> it working so well. So Martin, thank you very much again for coming along this morning. Can you just give us a quick intro to you and the company and uh, how you got started and how you've ended up building these great big bloody fantastic frames for X racing? Morning Lee, uh, thanks for inviting me along. Um, yeah, okay, this is it's, it's probably quite a long story, but I'll try and get it down into <laughs> a, a few seconds. Um, basically, fossil stuff all started um, it's probably nearly four years ago now, I suppose. Um, I run a business uh, manufacturing water waste and fuel tanks for the marine industry using high density polyethylene. Um, and we did a job for a German company using a, a two tone material, these were lightweight racing tanks. Um, and we had absolutely loads of it left over. And I've been looking for um, uh, some jobs to put on the CNC machine because it sits there four days a week doing nothing. We can cut our tanks for the week in a day. So I've got a 50,000 pound machine sitting there doing nothing. Always been interested in model airplanes and gliders, etc. Um, and I've just started getting into um, the drones. Saw this material sitting in the factory, designed up a frame. Well, it took a good few weeks, put it on the machine, put it all together, and it actually flew. And uh, then a local lad, um, he came down, wanted to have a look at it before he bought it, and was actually gobsmacked. He said, oh, you've got something here, Martin. And then he actually, it was, it was um, Chris Weston, started pointing me in the right direction. I'd never flown FPV or anything like that before. And really, it went, it went from there with the, with the plastic, the polyethylene frames. Then, of course, um, they started a bit popular with racing, but they were too heavy. Um, so we had to move to carbon. Smokey was doing well. I think he came seventh in nationals with an FSGX 210. Everyone said, you've got to go carbon. So hence we uh, came up with the Revo, which I think you had one, which again, you know, that was successful. It was, uh, it, you know, uh, smoking very well with it and others. Um, but again, weight started to become an issue. And believe it or not, the Revo ended up, it was too heavy. It wasn't competitive. It was sort of 150 grams, I think 135 grams. So the next stage was the S1, which I don't think you've had one of those, which came in at 68 grams, which is just mind-blowing. I still don't know how, how it's done, but worked with um, smoking the other lads on that, which was nice because it won the Scottish Nationals the other day with uh, Jake. So it's a competitive frame, but obviously the pilot <laughs> plays a huge part, part in it. 
So while all this has been going on, I've been watching um, the X Class sort of um, setups in in America. I know that um, Tony Starr and a couple of others are actually uh, racing them at the moment. Have you got a racing team? Is that what? It's no, we're, we're, we're not really racing. We're, to be honest, uh, they were still developing it. Arms are an issue. You know, we're, we're trying to stay light. So at the minute we've used a one mil wall section tube, but if you do come down heavy you do they just bend so fortunately it's not a big job to change them it's it's eight screws pull them out and um just replace them so next stage either thicker wall tube we've tried carbon does it crack and same but everyone has the same problem but the lighter the build obviously and the lighter the motors the less momentum you've got when you do come in i know with the builds that i've been doing the about a third of the weight is in the batteries about a third of the weight is in the motors and ESCs, and the rest of pretty much all the rest of the weight is in the in the frame itself. And you got a little bit for the flight controller and camera and stuff. What kind yeah, that's of, probably about right. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of motors are you running on these um, on these X Class racing frames? Sean Cox from North Aero um, messaged me one day and said he was developing um, some X Class motors. Would I be interested? So of course it was a UK source. Yeah, um, absolutely fascinated by what he was up to. Um, so we eventually got a set of those in, and my goodness, what a difference this thing just took off after that. I actually marked out um, the quarter mile speedway track that they were using at Antioch um, Speedway in the States. What they were doing, they were doing stock car racing, and in between the heats, they were running X class frames for the spectators around the track. We went bombing around, and we were flying, I don't know, 14 seconds. We were a good two seconds off the pace. Um, that's when we realised we needed to go to 8S. So right. 8S went on <laughs> and um, changed the props. We were running APC 14 by 7s. Then, yeah, they, they were okay, but then we moved to the Master Air Screws. Um, they've, they've actually developed uh, an X class prop now, which is a 13 by 12 pitch. Wow. Um, on 8S, 400 kV. And we, we actually were going around in about 11 and a half seconds. Fantastic. So we knocked over, over two seconds just by changing props and going up to going up to 8S. So that was a great result. Because a lot of the, the, the success that I've had with the endurance build so far has been taking motors designed for 4, 5, 6S and actually running them on 3 and 4S uh, with um, gentler props um, mm. because of because of the efficiency that you get. So the fact that there's manufacturers getting excited about building you know, low KV motors um, and actually investing in some decent prop manufacturer as well is, is really exciting. It's kind of, it's all gonna to go together. Um, so, so we've touched on a couple of things. I'm kind of interested to talk about what you've done um, cause I know we've spoken before, and you talked about the the, the journey. I want to use the J word, going from the initial the initial <laughs> flights were a little bit sketchy, and your experiences of you know tuning beta flight and what you've done or not to BL heli so that the motors are okay, because you know those motors are an awful lot less kv than what bl heli s is probably expecting to talk to you know it's typically mm. going to be 22 2700 kv not 400 yeah. so can we talk a little bit about what you guys have have done to get these pretty traditional components that we put in a five seven inch quad into this great whacking monster and get it to fly can we start off with what you kind of found out with the beta flight stuff it was basically watching a lot of videos uh, from the x class guys in, in in the states messaging them talking to them uh zoe the, the the 3d girl i can never pronounce her surname stumbau is it very she was she's been very helpful a guy called noah fernham and there's been several other guys and what it all boiled down to and there is a video and i can't remember i could probably find it again uh if if, uh, if we find it i'll put a link down in the description sure because it'd be worth people uh, it, it might have actually been a podcast actually it took about half an hour for the guy to actually come out with the answer he could have done the whole thing in probably five minutes but <laughs> um <laughs> it was an interview basically the whole thing is based around some a very very simple rule that worked for us straight out the box you take your standard pits at the time i mean, just take lots of notes here but we were running uh 44 on roll for the p 58 uh, for the pitch and um 70 on on the on the yaw and the rule of thumb double the p one third of the i and half the d the golden rule right that's the secret source for beta flight uh, on big, uh, big. Uh, 
that that will get you in the air. I think the only thing we tweaked was the um, the eye on the yaw went from 45 to 30. I think Tony took it up 10% or something. And as far as I know, he hasn't messed around with those pids at all. Right. Um, and he's still, I don't know if you've seen any VX Club videos, but the thing is flying amazingly. So can, so what have you done with vibration or to kind of combat that vibration? <clears throat> I'm, I'm guessing you're balancing the props, right? Yeah, when we first, um, first few flights, uh, vibration was horrendous. You know, it was almost like we were going flying down a bumpy road. It was, a, <laughs> it, it was terrible, absolutely terrible. And so then we, um, yeah, first thing was to balance the props, 14 by sevens, not a good prop straight out of the mould. Balanced them up on a very basic balancer. Poor, what a difference, just balancing the props. Right. Still had vibration issues even after that. We ended up using, under the motors, three millimetre thick neoprene that we used on our gaskets on the tanks. Did the job, made a, made a big difference. The other thing I found, I don't know if you've got the lower plate to that frame, the original camera mount was actually sticking out probably about an inch and a half. Yeah, where you, where the camera mounts there, well, that was originally sticking out probably 30, 40 millimetres. Right. And I think a lot of that, and there was a big hole, a lightning hole, so the, the camera was sticking out on two little arms, as it were, and we were getting a lot of vibration. I had to cable tie the camera down. In the end, I made a custom aluminium uh, mount for the HS1177, and again, that made a huge difference. But because of that vibration problem with the camera, I've hence moved the camera mount right back to the main frame. It's not sticking out the front, as it were. Yeah, and, then, and now vibration is almost non-existent. It's, um, Have you soft-mounted the flight controller? What flight controller like, yeah. are you using? We use the um, CL Racing F4 yeah. on, on both uh, the, the, the trial frames. It was absolutely fine. It came with the old... Um, you know the rubber bobbins mounts right so so it is it's using the rubber vibration isolating mounts that come i, I call them servo grommets it's, <laughs> it's like it's, it's, it's a large servo grommet <laughs> um works absolutely fine yeah right vibration isolate uh, vibration mount your flight controller balance your props and potentially put some vibration uh dampening under the motors and that's pr and uh, yeah and don't stick anything out on long thin arms because that will just waggle like crazy i've got one last question for you we've talked about vibration the frame the motors the props we've talked about the flight controller we've talked about the pits the other thing that um, I know I did a couple of um, weeks ago, I was with um, a friend of mine and we, he was building a big quad with really low KV motors. I think there were 120s, there might have even been 80s. I mean, really, wow. really ridiculous. Yeah. And one of the things we had to do in BL Heli was go in and drop, really drastically drop the motor timing because they were desyncing when he applied uh, throttle quickly. Because again, BL Heli S is not expecting an 80 or 140 KV motor. How, mm. how have you coped with the 400s that you've been using? Have you had to do anything in BL Heli with the motor timing or settings? Not that I remember, Lee. No, um, we, we, I think it's all on medium as far as I know. The frame I've got here is still not completely set up. We had a terrible job with the speed controllers, and that's another story. Um, speed controllers have been a complete nightmare. Right. Because there, no, there is nothing on the market for, and I know you're talking endurance, I'm talking racing, but... Yep. Um, very, very few speed controllers to handle um, the amperage. We're running 80 amps, wow. but they're, they're turning out 120 amps. But then somehow the Americans are blowing up ESCs and motors like they're going out of fashion. And I do not know what they're, what they're doing. Um, they're, they're mounting them on the outside of the frame on the top. Mine are actually in pairs, um, heat shrunk together actually inside the frame. My arms don't even get warm. We've got a temperature gun and we're just showing <laughs> ambient temperature. Motors are coming down cool. And yet they're doing videos, they're coming in with ESCs on fire. And so I'm not, I'm not sure what. I think either we've been very lucky or we'd, we're just um, probably a bit more careful during the build. I don't know. X Class is expensive. An ESC now is $120. Motors are probably a hundred dollars, and you add it all up, and it's just telephone numbers now. So um, for me, uh, yeah, if if you come across some motors that are kind of the four hundred to seven hundred or even eight hundred kV range, mm. uh, that look half decent, can you let me know? Because that I will get, <laughs> I will get four, because that's the kind of range I think I'm going to need to swing 
kind of 12 um 13 inch props and i think with that you know we'll get some blooming fantastic flight times out of the next endurance build um, well you might be interested in um let me just have a quick look see what size these motors are i mentioned my project x that waterproof thing hmm. i'm getting 20 minutes out of this these are right these are the emax 35 15 650 kv ran in a 14 by i think about 14 by 7 we were running two 4S 6.6, 6,600 right. milliamp hour okay, uh, in, in parallel. So at, at the moment, I'm trying to keep down to 3 and 4S uh, just because yeah. I don't need ridiculous amounts of thrust. The idea is to build a very light model uh, with yeah. very efficient thrust. Uh, the majority of the weight, as I said, is probably going to end up in the motors and in the battery itself. The reason that I'm, I'm kind of staying, I know lots of people are thinking about going 5 and 6S because the more voltage that you put onto the craft, uh, the, the motor will still consume the same amount of watts, but will pull less current. But those bigger yeah. batteries tend to weigh an awful lot more. But the other thing I'm interested in is trying to build craft that will use lithium ion cells. So the, I saw that in your last video. The, the lithium ion cells don't have the massive C rating, so it won't supply the huge current. Yeah. The majority of the weight that's, uh, that's in the cell is actually there to to store the energy rather than with bit lots of metal in there to pull the amperage out. Yeah, yeah. So for the same weight of battery, for what will be a 3700 3S LiPo pack, for pretty much the same weight, I'll get a 6000 milliamp hour lithium ion pack. So I understand uh, they're lighter as well, aren't they? The actual, the, the actual technology is lighter. The, the chemistry is a little bit different. The technology and the way they're built are slightly different. Um, mm -hmm. It's just something at the moment that I'm fascinated in. And the guys I'm working with are kind of experts. And not all lithium ion cells are created equal. Cool. So they're using some of the high capacity, high discharge yeah. ones. But yeah, we'll we'll come back to that. Martin, can I just say, you know, we've been going for a little while now, and I must say thank you very much for your time uh, this morning. That has been an education. I've learned an awful lot. So now I have a rough idea what I'm doing with the PIDs. I know I don't need to worry too much about BL Heli. If we're going down to 400. I'm now nowhere near that with the motors I've got here. So that's tickety boo. And the last thing I've learned from you is to just double check all the vibration stuff. And if I still have any problems, I probably need to put a bit of vibration isolating stuff under the flight controller to help that. But uh, that has been spectacularly useful. Uh, for all of you that are watching, uh, I'll put links to Martin's bits and pieces that he's talking about down below. Be looking to get hold of some motors then. And we'll actually do a blooming big build on this x-class frame uh, so i have to say thank you for, to martin for sending this stuff and again it, it links for everything that we've talked about are underneath but now i need to go away fire up beta flight and start playing with pids thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end we try and release a video on tuesday and friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well all of the videos on the channel are organized into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organize all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.